Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple of my favorite plays on prize picks uh, for Tuesday, May the 17th. We do have the Eastern Conference Finals starting on Tuesday night. We got game one of uh, Celtics and Heat. Got, you know, I took a look at the board. I'm recording this video on Monday, Monday night. You know, try to take a first look at the board, see what props stood out from what's available right now. Um, I will say that, you know, there's not a ton of options. Obviously, we only have one game on Tuesday. So, you know, at this point in the season where we're just going to have one game each day, it's going to be hard to give out, you know, a ton of plays. Like normally, lately, I've been giving out like two or three plays each day. That'll probably be the same for the conference finals. It'll probably be, you know, maybe three. I, I doubt I'll ever give out four plays in one video. It'll probably be maybe two to three just because at this point in the season, you know, with only one game a day, you just don't have as many player prop options. Um, you know, there's not going to be as many options on the board. The lines are really, really efficient at this point in the season. You're not going to find any, you know, just you're never going to find like super inefficient lines at this point in the season just because we kind of know we know how rotations are going to go. We know how many minutes each player is going to play. Um, whereas, you know, during the regular season, sometimes you'll get a player ruled out and, you know, prospects will put out a line for the player who, you know, maybe benefits with, with that guy out. And sometimes the line will be a too low. Um, you expect the player to play more minutes than maybe what the books are expecting. It, you know, at this point in the season, we don't have those, you know, kind of inefficient lines. But I still did find three props I liked for my, or for Tuesday night's game. Um, you know, recording this video on Monday. So, again, these are my, kind of my first looks at the board. But, yeah, we'll talk through the props I like for today. Just before we do get started, guys, uh, we can recap um, last pl uh, the plays we gave out on Sunday, I believe. That was the last time we had a game. We didn't have any games on Monday. But on Sunday, once again, unfortunately, which I think I think it's fourth or four straight days now that we have gone two and one on our three plays. So we have kind of we've lost out on a clean sweep now four days in a row by one play. Uh, we did hit the over 40 fancy points for Drew Holiday. Hit that fairly easily, finished with 44 fancy points. I think he hit it pretty early on in the fourth quarter. Um, even with that game being a blowout, Drew still went over 40 fancy points. Dorian Finney-Smith hit over 20 fancy points for him. Um, obviously, you know, that game, that Suns-Mavericks uh, game was just a massive, massive blowout. Nobody expected that. And, you know, luckily Dorian Finney-Smith still did go over 20 fancy points. Sadly, though, Mikael Bridges did not go over 24 fancy points. He only had nine fantasy points. And again, like, it was just... It was the most outlier game. The Suns lost by like almost 40. If you bet if you bet any overs on any Suns players on Sunday in that game seven, you probably lost. I don't think any Suns players went over their projections. You know, points, rebounds, whatever it may be. Basically, any overs you took on Suns, you probably got screwed. So, you know, over 24 fantasy points for Mikael Bridges did not come through, sadly. He did play like 32 minutes, even in the blowout. Um, but he really wasn't productive in that time. Nobody on Phoenix was productive. Even if Mikael Bridges played his normal 40, 42 minutes with how poorly he was producing, he probably wouldn't have got there anyway. So unfortunate that, you know, a game seven of the semifinals and the playoffs and we're having these, you know, massive blowouts. It's it's so weird. It's just odd. You would think at this point in the season, we'd have like close games every night. But lately it's been tough, you know, a lot of blowouts. Hopefully, though, these conference finals games every night is a close game. You know, we, we get our guys playing full minutes. So that's all we can hope for. Um, but again, we went two and one on Sunday. You didn't get the clean sweep, but hopefully you guys still did make a little bit of money Sunday. And let's talk through the props I like for today. Um, again, before we get started, hit that like button, guys. Always appreciate you guys checking out these videos. We've been getting a ton of support on these pricing videos. A lot of likes, a lot of views. I love to see that. Um, hit that like button if you haven't yet. Hit that subscribe button as well. Um, even though you know we just have one game today and we're just going to have one game each day for the rest of the season. I'm still going to try and you know, post these prize picks videos daily for you guys, giving out at least you know one or two, maybe probably at least two or three prop, uh, props that I do like each day. Hit that subscribe button. And if you're new to prize picks, you can check them out and sign up with my promo code, promo code NOAA. Uh, prize picks will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. But yeah, guys, let's talk through the three plays I like for today. It's going to start off in the PRA category. And this is one that I've been playing a lot in the playoffs, and it's been hitting a lot. And I'm taking it again. I think over 36.5 PRA for Jimmy Butler looks really, really good today. I think this line is too low. This is a line that Jimmy Butler has gone over now in five straight games. And if you actually look at his game log so far in the postseason, he's actually gone over this PRA line in eight out of ten playoff games. Um, I think he, he went over it in five out of six games against Philadelphia. The one game he did not go over, he did not play at all in the fourth quarter. He played 30 minutes. Uh, oh, dang it. I didn't mean to pull that up. He pulled up, or he played 30 minutes in game one of the Philly series because it was a massive blowout. He didn't play at all in the fourth quarter. Had 15 points, nine rebounds, three assists. So he finished with 27 PRA. Um, but then in, and then, and then in game one of the Atlanta series, um, he didn't play his full minutes either. He only played 33 minutes in that game. I think that game was also a blowout. 
He did have 21, 6, and 4. Um, came up just short, finished with 34 PRA. Every other game, every other game, all those other eight games, Jimmy Butler went over 36 and a half PRA. So Butler has been, you know, great in the playoffs. He's been going over this PR, uh, PRA line consistently. His usage has been great in the playoffs. You can actually look and see that uh, so far in the postseason, he is leading the Heat in usage, as you would expect, 28.6% usage rate uh, on average, you know, through all their playoff games. He's playing massive minutes every night. I would think, you know, in the conference finals, Jimmy Butler is going to play probably 40 minutes every night. The shot attempts are going to be there. He can get rebounds. He can get assists. Kyle Lowry is once again out for Miami, so I think that will be a little bit of a boost for Jimmy Butler's assist numbers. I think this PRA, uh, PRA line is too low. Even in the tough matchup against Boston, I think this line should be like 39 and a half, uh, almost 40 and a half. I still feel like it's a few points too low. So I like this one a lot, over 36 and a half PRA uh, for Jimmy Butler. Obviously, matchup against Boston is not ideal. We'll have to see how Boston you know, defends Jimmy Butler here. Um, you know, it's always tough when you get like the first games of the series just because you never really know how teams are going to you know, match up against each other. You don't know how teams are going to defend certain guys. I just think with the, the usage Jimmy Butler is going to get with how many minutes he's going to play, I feel pretty good about him getting at least you know, 37 points rebound assists. I could definitely see him finishing with like 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, and you know, going over. So I like this one a lot, over 36.5 PRA for Jimmy Butler. Second prop I like is a rebound prop. I know these can be a little bit, you know, a little bit fluky. It's a little bit tough to predict rebounds sometimes, but I like this one quite a bit. Over five and a half rebounds for Jalen Brown. That's the second pick that I like for today. Uh, this is a prop, or this is a line that Jalen Brown has gone over in three out of their last five games. If you actually look so far in the postseason, he's been getting a lot of opportunity for rebounds. He actually uh, is second on the team in rebound chances. Al Horford leads the team with 15.5 rebound chances per game in the postseason. Second on the team is Jalen Brown, uh, 11.6 rebound chances per game. Um, he's averaging over, or he's averaging over six rebounds. He's averaging six and a half rebounds in the playoffs so far. So, you know, his playoff average is actually one rebound higher than this than this line. Now, Jalen Brown has normally, you know, historically never been a fantastic rebounder. Like he's not a guy that you expect to get like double digit rebounds, but he's been rebounding pretty well in the postseason. You can actually look at his, you know, game log in the playoffs so far. In the seven games against Milwaukee, he did get at least six rebounds in um, five out of those seven games. Uh, two games he or two games he went under. He finished with five in one game, and then another game he only had three rebounds. But I think I think this game where he had three rebounds, he was in foul trouble and only played 32 minutes. And then in the four games against Brooklyn, um, he did get over six re or he did get six or more rebounds in one of the games against Brooklyn. Uh, three of the, uh, three of the other games though, he went under five, four, and four. But he's gotten at least six rebounds in, I think, a, or six out of 11 playoff games, if I'm doing my math correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so six out of 11 playoff games, uh, Brown has gotten at least six rebounds. The rebound chances have been there, though. That's what really stands out. Like, he's been he's been around the basket a lot and has had a lot of opportunity to grab boards. I'm not expecting Jalen Brown to get, like, you know, 12 rebounds today. I know he had a 12-rebound game uh, against Milwaukee, but I like his chance of getting six rebounds. I mean, we know Jalen Brown is going to play probably 40 minutes if this is a close game. Um, he's going to be around the basket. The rebound chances have been there. This is another prop that there's a little bit of a juice on the over right now, and that's something that, you know, at this point in the season, I kind of like to look at the sports books and look at what, you know, they have the lines at. And right now, uh, Jalen Brown over five and a half rebounds on DraftKings Sportsbook. If, if it'll load, it just went away on me. Um, five and a half rebounds for Jalen Brown on DraftKings Sportsbook is set at minus 125. So a little bit of juice coming in on the over there. I like the over as well. I like over five and a half rebounds for Jalen Brown as our second prop for today. And then our third prop is going to be an assist number. Um, this is one that, you know, last uh, last few games has not been hitting, but I definitely like this line at, at two and a half, and that's going to be over two and a half assist for Bam Adebayo. Normally, Bam Adebayo's assist line is around this number. Sometimes you'll see it at three. There's been points of the season where I think it's been at like three and a half. On the season, though, he has averaged you know, around three and a half assists per game. It's just that his assists have gone down lately. And he, obviously last two games against Philly, he had zero assists in both those games. But we do have a long track record of Bam Adebayo being a guy that, you know, can facilitate as a big man. Um, so far this season with Kyle Lowry off the floor and all the minutes he played in the regular season, Bam Adebayo had a 20% assist percentage, um, averaged over almost four and a half assists per 36 in the 741 uh, minutes he played without Kyle Lowry um, on the floor during the regular season. Obviously, Lowry is out for today. And you actually look at, you know, the potential assist. I mean, the potential assist have been there. Um, you know, they haven't, they haven't been as high as I would like, but he's still averaging five and a half uh, potential assists per game in the postseason, averaging close to three assists per game, uh, 2.7 assists per game. But he's still been touching the ball a lot, and this is something I like to look at as well. 
He's still averaging 57, over 57 touches per game, which is the third most on the team behind Butler and Lowry. And obviously Lowry, you know, is not out for today, so, or is, uh, he's out for today. So maybe De Bam Adebayo touches the ball more without Lowry. You know, he's a guy that normally when Bam Adebayo gets assists, it's, it's from like dribble handoff stuff. And they do run a lot of dribble handoff stuff with Duncan Robinson. But right now, Duncan Robinson has not been in the rotation for Miami. We'll have to see, you know, if they give Duncan Robinson some minutes today because he can. Bam Adebayo can, you know, get assists through Duncan Robinson because they run that dribble handoff stuff where basically Duncan Robinson gives the ball to Bam. Bam, you know, sets a screen, gives it back to Duncan Robinson, and, you know, Duncan Robinson goes around Bam, shoots a three. It just comes down to, you know, Robinson making that three or not. Um, but, you know, Miami's got good shooters around Bam. They obviously have Jimmy Butler. They have Gabe Vincent. They have Max Drews. These guys can knock down threes. Strews has been shooting the ball really well. You know, Miami's playing at home, so you expect kind of their, you expect their role players to probably play better at home. I know it's a, it's a little bit of a, like getting three assists from a big man is always a little bit scary when it's a guy that, you know, when it's a guy not like, um, like Jokic. Obviously, Jokic easily gets three assists any night, um, but like a guy like Bam Adebayo, Al Horford, it's kind of tough to predict when these guys are going to have big assist games. Um, I know Horford had a big assist game in game seven of that Milwaukee game. We've seen Bam Adebayo be able to get three assists um, regularly. You know, and I, I know he has averaged over three assists during the regular season. He's still been getting about six, seven potential assists per game. If he gets, you know, five, six potential assists, I like his chances of converting at least three of those and getting three assists. I will say that if, you know, if this line moves to three, then I wouldn't like it as much just because I think there is a pretty good chance Bam Adebayo does finish with three assists. And at that point, it would be a push. And I don't really like to play for pushes. But I like it at over two and a half. I like over two and a half assists uh, for Bam Adebayo today. I was looking to see what the uh, the sports books had Bam Adebayo at, and right now DraftKings Sportsbook they don't have a assist line for Bam Adebayo, which is kind of weird. But I would think there's going to be some pretty heavy juice on Bam Adebayo over two and a half assists if it gets posted. I'm not sure if it will, but yeah, I like this one a lot. Over two and a half assists for Bam Adebayo. And one thing I want to mention as well, um, I don't know if this you know really means anything, but for what it's worth, I know Bam Adebayo in the three games they played against the Celtics in the regular season, Bam Adebayo did go over two and a half assists in every game. Um, I think he had like, I want to say he had like seven assists in one game against Boston. Let me, I'm actually going to pull it up real quick. So Bam Adebayo's game log versus Boston this season, because I was looking at it earlier. I know you know, it may not matter, but for what it's worth, he did have eight, five, and four assists in the three games they played against Boston this season, um, during the regular season. You know, Boston's a good defensive team. Maybe when Bam touches the ball, maybe they, like, double-team him, and that's probably, that's what we want, because when, when Bam touches the ball, we, obviously, if we're betting on assists, we want him to be fish, facilitating, kicking it out to, to one of his shooters. I know it's a little bit of a fluky stat. It might be a little bit risky, but, you know, I like Bam's chances of getting three assists, you know, especially on average when he plays his normal 34, 36 minutes, he's usually going to get three assists in, in that time because um, he's, a, he's a decent passing big man. He's kind of like an Al Horford. So that's it for today, guys. These are the three plays I like for, for Tuesday night's uh, game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Again, guys, I'll say this one more time. You know, At this point in the season, only having one game a day, it is a little bit tougher to find a ton of props to stand out, especially with it being the playoffs. The, the prop lines are going to be very efficient. It's going to be hard to find you know, super inefficient lines at this point in the season. But I'm still trying to find a couple props I like each day that I can share with you guys. If I find any more props I like, and usually I will be able to find at least a couple more, I do share those over on Patreon. So if you guys have been enjoying these YouTube videos, if they've been helping you, you want to get more prize picks plays from me, I do provide those on Patreon. You can check that out. It's linked down below in the description. Um, get access to all my prize picks plays each day. Post some NBA plays there. Um, after the NBA season ends, I'll start posting MLB plays as well for prize picks. So you can check that out. Um, I'll definitely start making MLB videos on YouTube as well. But I appreciate you guys uh, checking out this video. Hit that like button before you do get out of here. Hit that subscribe button as well. Again, if you're new to Prize Picks, you want to sign up for Prize Picks, you make sure to use promo code NOAA when you do sign up. And Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. But that's all that I got for today, guys. Wish you the best of luck on tonight's slate um, or for tonight's game. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy the game. It should be a good game tonight. I'm excited to watch this one for sure. Hopefully, the game stays close and you know all our guys play full minutes. Again, if they do, I like their chances of getting, you know, getting their overs and, you know, hitting their lines. But, yeah, that's all I got for today, guys. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.